So this right here is my lifer, olive green swamp grasshopper. This is a huge female. I actually didn't know that this species could grow this big. I actually mistook it as a bird grasshopper as it was flying. Now, our olive green swamp grasshopper is very similar to a much more common species called the Atlantic grasshopper. But in the uh, olive green swamp grasshopper, the abdomen tends to extend past the tip of the wings. But the best way to tell the difference is the antenna color. On the olive green swamp grasshopper, the antennae are dark with white rings around it. Whereas on the Atlantic grasshopper, they're just like a reddish brown color with no patterning whatsoever. Now, you might be wondering what that liquid that this little guy has left on my hands is. Now, that's actually a defense mechanism that these guys do. So, um, it's a foul tasting and smelling liquid made out of uh, partially digested plant matter as well as their uh, digestive acid. So, when if, it, if one of these guys is getting eaten by a predator, it will release this into their mouth and it'll make the predator want to let go of the food item, in this case, this beautiful olive green swamp grasshopper right here. What a gorgeous, huge female and a lifer for me that I'm excited to get. When I first saw this little guy, I thought it was a frog, but it is actually an aptly named toad bug, which is a close relative to water bugs, water boatmen, and back swimmers. It was great to finally get some up-close views of this strange insect. Despite there being a close relative of this species being called least skipper, the actual smallest species of skipper here in Florida is the southern skipperling, which is so small it could easily be confused for a flower because it perches in these grassy areas. That was a pied-billed grebe, a bird I had actually never seen fly long distance before this. Their legs are so large and paddle-shaped, and their wings are so small and rounded that their flight looks very awkward. Now, this is called the pied-billed grebe, but this individual was in winter plumage, so the beak was overall a drab yellowish color. During the breeding season, their beak turns all white with a black ring around it. This right here is the metric paper wasp, a pretty easy species of paper wasp to identify because of its distinctive all-black abdomen and black tibiae. However, what interests me more than the wasp itself is its name. I cannot find anywhere where the name metric paper wasp comes from, or even the scientific name, Polistes metricus. Let me know in the comments if any of you guys know the origin of that name, please. This beautiful wasp right here is the Caribbean Scolid Wasp. The females could be easily identified, just like this one, by the bright red patch at the top of the abdomen. Now in this one, the wings, which are all dark, are kind of blocking this out, but you could make out that red patch a little bit through the edges of the wings. However, when this species' wings are open, the patch is very visible. These beautiful ducks right here are black-bellied whistling ducks, a pretty much unmistakable species. No other species has that distinctive black belly, the white stripe on the wings, and that bright red beak. Even in immatures which have a bluish gray beak, the patterning is still unmistakable. This species often travels in large groups, making these squeaky whistling calls and feeding all at once. Florida might be known for its white ibises, but this species is even more interesting looking in my opinion. These are glossy ibises, which appear all black from a distance, but in good lighting you can see that their feathers actually have beautiful red and green iridescence, hence the name glossy ibis. This is a perfect comparison between two often confused birds, the anhinga, which has its long thin neck out of the water, and the double crested cormorant, which has its entire body out of the water. This is a lifer dragonfly I've been wanting been for a long since, time, like, got a the common owed. basket tail. Now, most I individuals have like two months completely like clear that. wings, which makes it like very hard time. to distinguish it from similar species without close look at the abdominal segments. However, some individuals, like one of the ones in this tree, have a dark triangular patch at the base of each hind wing. This variability in wing coloration is only found in this species, at least where I am right now, which confirms the idea.